Hi, this is Greg here, and welcome to the Just a Meme podcast, where we chat about the future of making money on the web. Today, we have Matt joining us from MG Social, an ad-free social network with blockchain monetization po powered by Coil and Zoom. Good to have you, Matt. Thanks for being here. Thanks, thanks so much for having me, Greg. I'm really excited to be here and talk a little bit about what we're doing and what we have going on. Yeah, so I guess in the beginning, starting with your kind of background, maybe, and then we'll move on to what you're doing now. Yeah, where did it all begin for you? What's, what's your kind of professional career? Yeah, sure. So I grew up in, in California, in Orange County, uh, California, and I moved to, my background is in IT. When I moved to um, Silicon Valley in 2000, worked in IT for um, some of the big tech companies in the Bay Area, and first started he, uh, hearing about um, Bitcoin in, in kind of the early 2010s. But during that time, I was, I was working full time. I just got started going back to school and I was in the process of starting a, getting, meeting my wife and starting a family. So Bitcoin was always one of those things that I thought was a really interesting idea and just never got around the time to look into it, which you know, really in hindsight does. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because 2010 is but, uh, early. I think that's the earliest yeah. person that I've heard actually say that, <laughs> like in real life sort of thing. Yeah. yeah, maybe not 2010, but like in the early 2010s, like in that range. But anyway, and then I'd taken some time off um, from work to complete uh, my degree. And when I was finishing up with school, I, I had... Um, I was get, about to get back into the workforce and I had this uh, job interview with this place in San Francisco called Uphold. Having that job interview, the job didn't end up working out, but it was at that point that I had that interview that I started really sort of looking at digital assets more seriously and really started getting into them in earnest during the, the 2017. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what did you major in? Was that like computer science or something else sort of thing? So I've done, my, my undergrad was in business management with a focus on IT. And okay. then when I did grad school, I got a, a cybersecurity degree. Oh, nice. So very yeah. IT kind of operations, IT. more security sort of uh, infosec, if you can. I've, you know, I've dabbled in, in programming and stuff. In hindsight, I probably, if I was starting all over again, I definitely probably would be a developer just because I, I, I really find that development interesting. Mm. Um, know enough to be dangerous but uh, what i tend to do is i'll get something started and then bring in uh, more skilled people to help me polish and improve stuff yeah um, but anyways when i started getting into digital assets i got into bitcoin at first for a while did got into ethereum was doing ethereum mining for a little while and then got into xrp and then again in xrp kind of led me to being interested in coil when coil launched and then when the cinnamon video launched, I was kind of jumped on that when that launched and really had been fed up with sort of the, the traditional sort of existing models for social networking, the business models, which are based around advertising and surveillance, capitalism, selling user data and things like that. Um, so I was really waiting for someone else to create sort of a web monetized Twitter or Facebook like app. Mm. Uh, and just kept this when you have ideas, usually you look it up and then somebody's already done it or they're in the process of doing it. And I kept looking for something like that and not seeing it. So just decided not even knowing how far I would be able to take it or if I would even be able to get something launched, just decided to see what I could launch on my own, which is how MG.social was first born. Okay. Um, yeah. So really, we launched um, to the public. I started developing the, the app early um, last year, and then we launched the public. It was like April, May of last year. Yeah. And so we, that was, we launched our initial web app, and I've been improving that. And we had our sort of business model, we, we require a Coil subscription to, to access the network. So we've been growing slowly, and Coil, it's really still a niche um, product at this point. So yeah, we cool. knew that it wasn't going to be like we were going to like blow up instantly. Yeah, so we're looking at this. I'm looking at this as a long haul type thing. And I, we're looking at, I'm thinking as we, maybe we'll grow slowly, but at least as we grow, we with this sort of model, our, our revenue should grow as our user base grows. And the other idea is that we want to be able to, to, you look at all these social networks and the network itself is nothing without the content that's provided by the users. So we yeah. really feel like users should be able to get a piece of that, of that revenue um, that we're generating. Yeah. Um, and how do you do that at the moment? Do you do like a, a split of fees uh, streamed by a coil or is it like mostly tipping? 
at the moment. The way that we have things set up really, um, when, when you're looking at the, the feed of the website, where when you're looking at other people's postings, the posting that you're looking at, you can see the payments being streamed to that post. And a hundred percent of the, the coil revenue, when you're seeing someone's looking at someone's posting is going to that user. And you can verify that with tools like, what is it? There's, there's like, I forget the name of it. There's a tracker, what is it called? Pay tracker, where you can see your payments as you're making them. So you can see that. Or is that and, a bit like um, Etherscan sort of thing for Ethereum? So you can track the actual. Yeah, so you can see yeah. the payments that you're making through Coil as you make them. And yeah. so, yeah, the way that we monetize the site is that the ancillary pages of MG Social, when you're on the login page or when you're looking at the latest friends page or things like that, we're getting that revenue. And then when you're viewing someone's content, if you're on their profile page or if you're on their posting, then the, the Coil monetization is going to them. And okay, cool. Have, we also have some tips on postings. People can get um, tip for their posts. That's built in XRP, isn't it? That part. Yeah. 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 Right now it's XRP and on our roadmap, what we're something we're looking at is incorporating other XRPL tokens into tipping as well, including our own token, which we're launching. Um, yeah. Before we jump onto that, what's your grant for the web project? What will, you know, grant for the web help you do in MG social? Like what will sure, it help so, accelerate? So <laughs> So really up until this point, I've been pretty much self-funding this entire project. Have you been so, doing a lot of the coding yourself or you sound like you had I, someone else helping I out? I did some of the initial work getting getting a, a, our initial product out there and then I got it as far as I could and then brought in, I've been bringing in developers to help. Um, there's a developer, um, Rob Soriano, who's been, been pretty much our lead developer, who's done um, a lot of the work improving the site. He created our mobile app from scratch, which I think is looks great. Um, and then he's also creating our new web app, which we're going to be launching this year. So the funding from Grant from the Web um, is going to be really to help us complete the rest of our roadmap for this, for this year. We have, like I was saying, our new web app we're going to be launching. So we're working on that right now. We're going to be starting our MGS uh, utility token distribution next month. And just to be clear about our token, we're not going to be selling our token to fund our development or operations. Mm. Uh, we're using the, the revenue that the site is currently generating and the, the grant for the web funds to fund our, our development and operations. And then um, the idea with our utility token is that we're going to be giving the entire supply is going to be for the mg.social users. So we're going to be distributing those to our users as a, a daily reward for participating in the network. Yeah. Um, one of the hardest things about launching a new social network has been not necessarily getting new people to sign up, even with the coil requirement, we've had about, about 250 users um, sign up on the platform so far. Yeah. Really the most challenging aspect has been get, keeping people coming back and using the platform daily because it is still a small community of users. People, they want to be where the audience is at. Um, so are you going to so do kind of sort of a bit like Facebook did like referral sort of things like invite your friends and get tokens I, I guess would be quite an obvious one to do but or do you not want to incentivize that sort of behavior just yet so we haven't that's something that people have asked about a lot is a referral program we haven't really come up with one quite yet the way we're going to be doing our initial distribution of the tokens is it's going to be a daily reward for every if you're a user that's participating in the distribution if you come to the platform and log in and create a post for that day with the, the hashtag for the token you're going to be eligible to receive a daily reward so we're going to basically have like a bucket of tokens that we release each day Day. And then for every user that participates for that day, they will get an equal sort of an equal percentage of that day's distribution. So that's the initial idea that we have. And we may, we're going to, we're going to do that for our first month of distribution and see how that goes. And we may alter the program, change the requirements, or another idea we have may have implementing in the future is doing like achieve, uh, unlocking achievements and getting tokens for doing certain achievements and things like that. Yeah, that um, makes sense. So that's our idea. And then um, some of the use cases that we have planned right out of the gate, when we launch this, we're going to do our, we're going to do community governance voting. People will so be is that going to be a separate token or are you just going to run that as like 
straw polls, I guess, like random polls sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Essentially like polls, it'll be, people will be able to earn the, the MGS tokens by interacting with the network. And then they'll be able to spin the tokens to vote on, um, vote on governance proposals. It won't be, it won't like give you like a voting right. It'll, you'll be spinning the tokens to vote. Interesting mechanism. I, I thought you were going to say stake tokens because for me, governance, I feel like you probably don't want to spend money on that. You'd like to have, so if you stake your sort of thing, you get a bigger share if you're a power user, for instance. And I, I think that's quite an interesting mechanism. Like I was wondering if you were going to say yeah. oh, people need to stake tokens to post daily and no. you know, or, or stuff like that. Cause I think that's quite an interesting mechanic, but if you disappear the tokens out of existence i don't know all your tokenomics and stuff just my kind of knee-jerk reaction to this but if you stake it for governance and then spend it on the other stuff i, I wonder yeah it, it, it's worth playing around with because i've seen loads of different models um the one that jumped to mind when you're saying like daily airdrops thundercore the guys we work with they have like a little mining app in there and you oh, go okay. back each day and it accumulates yeah. and you click claim and you get those tokens, but each time you claim you, the accumulation goes a little faster and we're talking oh, about okay. 0. 0.0000 many zeros us dollar. They're doing really well out of it. I think they have about hundred thousand daily active users and oh, stuff. Wow. Like, it's crazy, <laughs> but it's yeah, quite a cool great. thing. Like, so I think something, uh, the mechanism like that can work extremely well, but yeah, sorry, governance and spending tokens for polls. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think since, since we're not, I wouldn't want to ask people to like spend their XRP to vote for governance. But if you're earning the token for free, sort of by daily interacting with the network, yeah, it's, yeah. a, it's less of an ask, I think, for people to spend them. And it also gives, I think, power to the people who are most using the network to have the most say in the direction and things. But it's an experiment. We're going to see how it goes. The first vote we're going to do, we're going to put the vote out there. And then in the future, we'll have, we'll design a, a community amendments process where people can propose their own, their own proposals to vote on. Yeah. And then one of the other things that we have for people to, to use the tokens on is we have a, we're creating a, a I've created a, a prototype for doing decentralized posting on, onto the XRPL. Okay. So the, kind of the idea is that people would be able to, to spin their tokens to back up their post onto the public ledger. Um, to, and then we'll create a, a public front end where anybody could view those posts and then interact with them. And then the idea is that those postings will exist on a, on a decentralized ledger, censorship resist qualities and things like that. And then we'll release sort of a, a front end for that open source where that anybody will be able to run their own front end and interact with those postings. So will they, they function a bit like an NFT then, I guess, or is it more focused on like the censorship resistance nature of it? You probably wouldn't want to fractionalize your post and <laughs> sell them off, but maybe you would, maybe if it goes really well and you get the first post, <laughs> a bit like Jack did his uh, Twitter oh, yeah, with, the other day. Because right now the mg.social, it exists behind a coil paywall. Um, and it's centralized in the sense that it's, even though our monetization and stuff is on the blockchain, the actual internal database and everything is centralized on our own server. AWS um, or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sort of the idea with this is that sort of the posts themselves would exist on the ledger. So the back end is on the, on the ledger and then anybody could run their own front end to, to interact with that data. It's not dependent on us. Other people could create their own front ends. And then if we went away, the post would still exist. So that, that's the idea with it. And like that, like with the governance, it's, it's an experiment, something we have a, a working sort of, um, prototype right now. Um, so that's one of the things we're going to be improving with the, with the grant funds and everything is getting that ready for public consumption and seeing how, what people, how people react to that. And also it's a way to bring those qualities of being able to, if you want, you can have those abilities, but not forcing it on everyone. Cause I mean, mm. some people, they, they may not want to have, they may not want their post because the drawback is your post exists forever. You can't go back and delete it yeah. or edit it. It may make sense for some things and not other things. So the idea is we, one of the philosophies I have with this project is giving users options without forcing things onto them. Mm. Like you can use MG social and not monetize your posts. You don't have to monetize your posts. 
you don't have to accept zone tips on your post scenes. If you want to give people options, but not force things onto them. Yeah, but yeah, yeah you, you mentioned NFTs. That's definitely something, you know, we're looking hard at and want to eventually integrate. I would love to have like NFT minting and gallery. I would really love for us to have sort of our own NFT game too. Something like a, a Splinterlands or something like that. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, sort, of, <laughs> sort of, maybe something a little more for the casual player, but something that's something that I've been trying to think of is trying to think of ways to keep people coming back to the platform, using it, interacting with it, and so that um, yeah, so that we're able to generate the sort of revenue we need to keep the site going. Yeah, as a stopgap, have you talked? Have you seen the guys JS thirteen K and Andrej? I think that's how you say his name. I did an interview with him uh, a while back and they build games that are web monetized. And I wondered as yeah. a stopgap, like whether redirecting to, or maybe like an iframe within your website, again, you'd have to talk to him about the tech stack there, just making a, cause on Facebook, as, as I remember back in the day when I used to play games on Facebook, <laughs> um, it was all done in a name and it was Zynga that ran the yeah. poker for instance. So right. I wondered if you could make like a little portal that people can interact with Andres is, and I always get his name wrong, <laughs> Andres's that's, stuff. <laughs> that's a really great idea. And I, I will probably reach out and um, yeah, see definitely. I'd love, I'd love to find more people to partner with. That was one of the, the things that made me sort of hesitant about trying to do our own game is just the game development. It's, it takes a lot of resources and it's not really our expertise. And if you can build it open source, like again, it's called Enclave Games. Yeah. Um, I've, I've just realized I've got that on my notes here because I checked it a while ago. Yeah, so that they run like hackathons for game developers right. and stuff. So there's yeah. a pool of talent there. And so it'd be quite cool. Yeah, it'd be great. Us as well, just going back to the NFT thing, we're looking at building a open source NFT platform through XRPL. Again, yeah. it's a separate grant, but you've probably uh, heard of it as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I definitely see the, this whole kind of thing tying in together. So that will be open source as well. They always describe DeFi as money Legos. And this is, I think you have to be selective and know your point of differentiation and then let the others fill in the rest sort of thing. And, and that's the beauty and of I, it. <laughs> and I'm very excited by the idea of NFTs on, on the XRPL. We've we're already integrated. If we try to do NFT, NFTs through like, you know, Ethereum or something like that, then it's like you're making people use a bunch of different sort of things. So I, I'm really excited to see. I, I don't remember the, the gentleman's uh, name, the, the, the person who was, they did their sort of proof of concept of NFTs. Matt on, Hamilton? Uh, Matt, um, I know there was another developer that sort of released their, okay. um, a video of their version, but yeah, I know XRP, I forget, was it Ripple X or the, I think they're proposing their own standards too. Really excited to see how that shakes out. And, yeah. Uh, where that goes. That seems like a moving target right now. I think we're going to hold off for a little bit and see how that shakes out before we try to jump right into that. We've yeah. already got, that's another thing I'm worried about. Just, you know, I, have, I have so many ideas of things I want to do and things we want to implement, but try not to spread ourselves too thin. That's too. a classic uh, garlic yeah, house I mean, quote, isn't it? Peanut butter. Don't yeah, spread yourself too thin. Kind of <laughs> yeah. And we're getting this grant for the web funding, but it's, it's a, it's a good amount of funds, but it's not enough to really, it's not millions of dollars. We want to try to focus. And I and think some of the feedback we've had from investors more recently, actually, because we, we thought uh, originally we thought we were going to get investment in straight away. And then we realized we could bootstrap it for quite a while. And like, they've been yeah. quite impressed with how much like we've been able to do without getting millions and i think that so you're always on a thing to come uh, on a negotiation always come from a position of strength if you've built all this tech you have a track record you have you say we've delivered this and this this is our roadmap we know how much we're burning per month and we can ramp that up or down but you're just so much more confident in what you're doing because in the beginning it's like Okay, now I need to project revenues. <laughs> we don't even know what the product is. <laughs> it's quite a hard thing. So yeah, I, grant funding, I think is an excellent way to experiment, especially with all the new tech coming out. We've touched on two uh, grant programs here that yeah, are massive. And then there's a whole shed load more, but again, it's the peanut butter thing. Like how many integrations <laughs> does, yeah. does one platform get? <laughs> and maybe it's all of them, who knows, <laughs> but that's permissionless development for you. <laughs> I'm really excited though to see what projects come out of the, the, the XR, who is it? Is it, is it Ripple X that's doing that or? X yeah, I think I'm it's, sorry. it's definitely sponsored better. by Ripple X. I can't remember yeah, if there's a separate, I think it's just called XRPL grants. Yeah. Um, but I might be getting that wrong. 
I, we'll leave, I, I the, <laughs> we'll leave I, links I was, in the description for anyone. <laughs> so clear it up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was thinking about applying to that, but we had just gotten approved for our, our grant for the web funding. Mm. And the deadline for the, there wasn't a whole lot of. It was tight. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty tight. Um, so we, I decided that, um, and we're already getting funding. We'll let some other projects go for that, that one and then maybe no, see what they do. I think it's sensible we're stacking them up on top of it. So our grant for the web project was, you know, pretty much full time, full time yeah. thing for a good amount of months. So yeah, doing two of them at once would have been very interesting, especially from like a tech standpoint as well, trying to think about the moving parts on both sides. I'm, I'm sure that would have kept yeah. the uh, CTO up <laughs> many a night. So yeah, co coming back to MG Social, like, I suppose we could, we could touch on like where you want to go, but what is there a kind of like a, this kind of grand vision for it? Is it to become that Facebook that isn't stealing people's data, for instance, or integrating the different parts? Is that's the future for you guys? Or is there other stuff yeah, that I, we haven't touched on? I mean, <laughs> really when, when, when I started this, my idea was that this will really, to me, be a success if we can get to a point where where we can where we can be self-sustaining off off just the web monetization revenue mm. and we haven't gotten to that point yet but that's really that's really was really my goal for this was to have a like you said a social network that can exist without tracking and ads and selling data and and really giving people the ability to to monetize their content as well and to be to be i want us to be the most transparent and creator friendly social network in existence we try to be very transparent as far as you know, we re we release monthly numbers of our all our stats and our analytics and everything like that and all the revenue we're generating and the revenue we're generating for our users and really one of the things that that i thought of of what I want this to be, to exist as a, a content monetization sort of vending machine for people where they could plug in their content in whatever form it exists, either if it, whether it's words, their ideas, their thoughts, it could be uploading a, a song, a video that you created, and just being able to have it spit back out a, a monetized version of that content that people could easily consume and then have the creator fairly compensated for it's a, a really cool thing creators are crying out for more things i think um, to monetize i think the future is very creator centric and i think we see that in web3 in general with nfts and stuff being all about tracking the rights and making cutting out the middlemen and all that right. stuff so i think it's I think we got good timing here and I, I can definitely see. <laughs> well, I, I think Adam, Adam has brought this up before where he, I, I think he listed like the amount of revenue that it was like Instagram or something made in a year. It's some crazy 11, you know, billion dollars of revenue or whatever. And it's like, none of that's going to the, you know, to the yeah. people's powering the platform and giving the platform its content. If you look at any other sort of a medium that's ever ex that's existed throughout history, whether it's radio or TV or film, newspapers, you know, yeah. the, you know, the when a newspaper, yeah, exactly. A writer gets paid to write the story for the newspaper. Yeah. It's not just like, and I hear that kind of argument made where the platform creator, they're putting, they're doing all the work creating and running the platform. And it's like, yeah, that's true. They should be a, I'm not saying that they shouldn't be able to, to get there, to make a profit, but it's, I, I just feel like the people that are providing all the content deserve a piece of that pie. Yeah. Um, I, I think we've seen that offshoots of this, like already happening with people slowly lowering it, their percentages, but it's still not anywhere yeah. near that cool sort of middleman less <laughs> system right. and no uh, yeah. i think that'd be really cool to see it come to fruition really <laughs> i'm excited about this really excited to see I, when i launched this like i said i didn't know how far i would even be i didn't even know if i'd be able to get it as far as we've gotten it now so mm. I, i'm just really excited to see what we're able to do with this grant for the web funding and i'm really excited to see where we're able to take this and yeah you know, at the same time if it doesn't work out i knew launching this that it was going to be a <laughs> very uphill battle and that the existing platforms have had some of them have had over a decade you know plus head start yeah. and they're very well funded and i knew that that it's a long shot but i'm really excited by the technology and the people that that we've had to join the platform so far i seem really excited about it and it's been very encouraging seeing the reaction of, of our the, the people who have been our loyal sort of core group of people using the app yeah, yeah that's really, great to hear
<laughs> and I, I feel like I knew this wasn't going to be something that was going to, so I didn't see it as like a get rich quick scheme or anything like that. And, and definitely the amounts that we're making from coil, they're small, I'm really excited to see how we're able to grow that. And if we're able to make it sustainable, I, re I really hope that's the case. Yeah. Like I said, really looking forward to seeing how the platform develops with this additional chest of funding. We're going to be launching our new web app this year, before the end of this year. And our existing web app, it's been, it gets the job done, but it's not, it's not the prettiest. It's not the sort of most modern looking thing in the world. Excited by our developer, Rob, seeing what he's come up with our new web app. It just looks really great. So I'm really excited to get that released and get some of these other use cases that we want to implement with the token and things like that released. We can really see where that goes. Our web app, or excuse me, our mobile app came out earlier this year. And the reaction to the mobile app has been really good. So I'm excited to see when we're able to get our new web app and, and some of these use cases out, people's reaction to it and seeing if that sort of helps us grow and get more, more daily interaction. Yeah. No, oh, great. Cool. That's it for me. I, d I don't know if you had any kind of final closing thoughts there. No, just huh? really appreciate you taking the time to, to talk to us, to talk to me. And something that's been really great. Um, about this project has just been getting to, we have users from all over the world on our site and just being able to, to interact with people in, in different countries and hearing you know, different perspectives has just been really great. And this project, it's been a, a huge, you know, learning experience for me. I've learned so much more about COIL, web monetization, the XRPL, the nuts and bolts of how everything works. And I had to become a jack of all trades, learning about marketing and yeah. all this even if this even if this never goes anywhere i feel like it's been a great learning experience for me and just just being able to make you know so many connections in the community has been a really positive experience yeah for sure no i think that's a great way to uh, wrap up and uh, we'll definitely chat after about connecting you to more people out there in the space because i think there's some really cool connections that i can see forming in my head <laughs> I, I think so too and I, I think that's definitely something we need to work on more is getting out and connecting with other people in the space who are building things and seeing how we can collaborate and have synergies so, so i'm excited about that yeah cool Okay, thanks everyone for listening and thanks for tuning in to Just a Meme where we talk about the making the future of making money on the web. Please do get involved, give us a like, send some comments and please check out the notes in the description for all the links you're going to need for this. And yeah, spread the word, see your th friends. Thanks again, Matt, for being here. And yeah, that's it. Thank you so much and uh, hopefully we get to talk again soon. Yeah, no problem. All right, cheers. All right.